Hey guys, uh, back with a new build guide for 3.23. In uh, this video, we're going to be going over some Scion armor stacker builds. We have three builds to cover, so the video might get a little bit long, but I'll try to cut it up in uh, timestamps so you can jump around to the build you want to look at. But um, basically, the gear and items are pretty similar with all three, so I'll, we'll go over the first build, which is going to be a Transcendence uh, build. Um, and then after that, we'll go over the other two builds, which use pretty much similar gear, but we're just gearing them uh, using doing a few different things. And we'll go over those differences uh, like that. So basically just watch the Transcendence version. And if you're interested in the other ones, just check out what I'm doing to get them working. All right, so let's jump in. And first of all, let's go over the different builds. We're going to be go going over these builds here. These are my three um, high budget builds for the... Uh, Scion Armor Stacker. First, we have a Transcendence Armor Stacker version. This is using Calm Spirit and Original Sin. Uh, and then we have a two, uh, what do you call it, Grasping Male Armor Stacker versions. These aren't using Transcendence, but instead we're using some charms um, to get a mini Transcendence. So the charms we're using is the 3% uh, of Elemental uh, of Armor applies to Elemental Damage taken from Hits, right? So this is basically Mini Transcendence, and then we're using, one of them uses Aegis uh, Aurora, and the other one just uses two swords to get just like max DPS, right? So here we are in game, um, we're, I'm running the Transcendence version, and I want to say Transcendence this league isn't really as good as it was in previous leagues, uh, mainly because there isn't really a lot of support to get max res, so... Basically, your base Transcendence build is going to be able to get 75 all res, uh, which is a little bit low, right? Usually I'm at like around 80 or so in other leagues, so. But you could get a little bit more with, uh, you know, some things you can do to get like 76, 77, maybe. Um, but for now, this is what it is. And uh, a lot of the gear in uh, that I'm using now is not min-maxed at all. Basically, I've just got everything I needed to actually get the build running. So, uh... Uh, basically defenses are there but um damage wise it is a little bit on the low end i would say i mean our, it's not like really bad we have about uh, about like 100 million combined dps if we're doing the double hit with smite right so that's not really not that low i would say but for me it is kind of low you know i'm used to having about 200 plus 200 million plus dps so but anyways that will all come when we get better gear upgrades um, this is sort of an advanced build guide, and I expect that most people who are interested in this build already know the base, basic concepts for Armor Stacker. So we're not really going to get into that, and um, basically i um, not going to really explain a lot of mechanics. We're just going to go over the gear and how I built it. So first of all, uh, let's go over some of the gear. In order to get Transcendence running, we have to um, negate the downside of basically us not having any physical damage reduction from our armor and the way we do this is we convert all of our, our uh, physical damage taken from hits to elemental and the way we're doing that is there's a couple of things and let's go over the passive tree first what we're doing first we have this armor and energy shield mastery it's 10 percent over here we have another 20 percent on the watcher's eye you can get a little bit higher uh, and then we have 18 percent on the helmet and we have 28 percent on our shield and then we have um 15 percent on the uh flask right so when the flask is down we're not at 100 percent, so we are a little bit vulnerable to fizz damage but even then when the flask is down let's go take a look in pob real quick all right so with the flask up we're about 680k max hit taken flask down 100 but this is with molten shell up right so if we take molten shell off uh it is going to drop down by a bit so 46 but even with this um 46k max hit taken is enough to actually tank most things in the game i think a shaper slam did like it's like 18k or 20k fizz so yeah it you can still you, you're still it's not like you're gonna like die from anything with this right but you are a little bit vulnerable and for some of you guys thinking well this kind of 
awkward what happens if you don't have flash charges and all this kind of stuff but i took a build similar to this last league down to 6300 depth and i was killing crystal kings all the bosses at that depth at 6300 um, and it was not a problem I, I was never in a situation during my whole delve push all the way down to 6300 where i was like oh shit you know i don't have flash charges I always had flash charges um, in all the delve biomes. You're always killing mobs. You're always getting flash charges. And the Crystal King died before I ran out of flash charges. So it uh, wasn't really a problem. All right. So that's kind of how we are converting. And there's, there is one thing to note that um, you don't actually really want to go over 100% converted. And we are, I actually am over 100%. And the thing, funny thing is if you go over 100% percent of fizz converted to elemental right you actually start taking increased damage right and this was confirmed on reddit by one of the ggg staff that yeah that's kind of how it works so if, if you go over 100 percent, then well you're just taking increased damage but thing is um for me i think the increased damage you take is negligible right um it's for me it's better that I have a lot converted, um, enough converted that when my flask is down, my fizz max hit is still a decent number. So, right. So, um, it's kind of something you have to kind of balance around, I guess, right. Um, with your gear and all that kind of stuff. All right. So that's about how we are converting all of our fizz damage. Let's go back in game. Aside from that, let's go over some of the gear pieces. Um, so you're going to need a helmet similar to this with a, this is, uh, this leak I decided to use the Delve uh, Fracture instead of the Betrayal one. So there is um, other, there's two of these um, mods here, uh, the Fizz taken from Hits As, right? So there's one that comes from Delve you can get. This one is very hard to get item level 84 helmet. So most of them are gonna be item level 83. Um, and what you do is, uh, there's another one here. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, there is a... Uh, so this one from Delve is a suffix, right? And the one from... There's another one from Betrayal, right? It's a Corel. And this one is a prefix. <clears throat> Viz taken as fire. So up to you which one you want to use. Um, for me, I, this league... Last league I was using the Corel one. This league I wanted to get a plus two AoE on my helmet. So I decided to use the Delve one. Basically, so if you use the Corel one, you get an extra suffix that you can use for like intelligence, you know, get uh, some intelligence like that. If you're using that, but then you lose a uh, prefix, so that means you have, you can't get a plus two AOE. Well, you can't even because this is a veiled mod and you can't have two of them, right? Uh, so with this uh, Delve mod, you can actually get the unveil for the plus two AOE and still get a decent amount of energy shield. You see, we're at 301 energy shield on this helmet, which is pretty nice. All right, so, um, yeah, and then so we get 18% on the helmet, we get 10% from the um, Delve mod, and then another 8% from the Eater of Worlds implicit. I do have a video on how to craft these helmets, you can go check those out. Uh, but I guess it, it is a little bit different if you go for the Delve one, you basically just go, you do the uh, suffixes, right? You do with the Deafening Essence of Loathing until you get a, uh, you can only get tier 2 Cold Res if you have an item level 83 item. And then after that, you just use uh, Eldritch Currency Exalts on the prefixes until you get a tier one um, energy shield, right? So you can get a tier two increased or a tier one flat. Ideally, you get the tier one flat. I didn't, well, I did a few times, about three times, but um, Ashling wasn't very kind. It took about, uh, I think, 11 or 12 tries to actually get the unveil. So this helmet ended up costing me about we count in all the failed fractures which was this was like the fifth one i think that worked so it was about maybe 150 200 divines to actually make this helmet uh so pretty unlucky i would say okay so for the um so i guess the sword is just the replica dream feather nothing special going on here and let's see so the grasping mail so minimum grasping mail you want is going to be um well ideally you have a global defense and a cold or you know a coal a double overcap cold fire is going to work as well it's going to give you a bit more damage or you go for a coal uh global defense and fire you know all of them will work you just need one of the overcap mods 
Um, and if you're on a budget, you can just go for a single overcap, right? So a single evasion or a single fire, uh, that'll work as well. Um, okay, yeah, so that's pretty much the Grasping Nell. For the Amulet, I still think Eternal Struggle is going to be best in slot, either this or a very good Simplex Amulet. Still haven't really looked around on the Simplex Amulets, but, you know, something like that. And then, um, it's kind of sad, Ashes is, well, I think Ashes is still very good, but... All of the um, gem qualities are just complete trash. Like, it's... There's nothing really good that the quality is going to give us, really. I mean, we might get some more resistance because Purity of Ice and Purity of Elements do give resistance, right? So you get... You will, and I think in P.O.B. it was actually a little bit more damage to put Ashes on, but then we lose global defense, we lose um, attributes, and we lose aura effect. So... Hmm... Something to consider, but for now, uh, I'm liking the Eternal Struggle. It also gives you Culling Strike, which is pretty insane as well. Alright, so after that, uh, we're using the Dawn Breaker because of the, uh, we need to convert our Fizz uh, damage taken to Elemental, right? So you want to get one with a max roll on the, on the physical damage taken as Fire on the Explicit, and the Implicit, you want to get it one Corrupted, um, preferably with Fizz taken as Chaos because, you know, we are immune to chaos damage so basically it just makes makes it like it just removes the damage right so okay so original sin why are we using original sin well i mean obviously uh, i think you know most people know original sin insane for damage right especially we use it when you use it in conjunction with the uh balance of terror over here so whenever we cast despair we're now inflicting uh, wither on hit so we get another source of uh, another mole mu more multiplier in you know the wither stacks right um but you know uh one one huge thing about this is the um nearby enemies chaos res is zero so you know for me i like consistent damage right that's why i like doriani's prototype on uh, builds like that because it's just consistent damage right um most monsters bosses have resistances and these resistances can be increased by like map mods or uh, arch, ne arch nemesis mods or alter mods and all these kind of things and all of a sudden you know you're doing 100 million dps but then you run into a mob with like a billion re resistance and then your 100 million dps all of a sudden becomes 10 million dps or 20 million dps and it just feels bad right so i like consistent damage and the, the original sin does provide that because you know their resistances are set to zero uh, same thing with Doriani's prototype, you know, we set their resistances to what we have, so everything feels consistent, nice, it's like if you have 100 million DPS in POB, you're going to have 100 million DPS in game, it's just, you know, those things don't really change. So, original sin, uh, very nice, we do have an extra button to push, so now we have to do, you know, smite, uh, and then we do grace aura, despair, for some reason it is double casting, maybe just my cast speed is so fast. <laughs> Uh, Necromancer Aura, amazing by the way. Alright, so for the boots, still on uh, March of the Legion boots. Let's see, so mine aren't very good, like I said. I um, was focusing all of my currency into creating mostly these two rare items to get the build running. So, you know, the boots are still pretty bad. We still need to get a plus four pair of boots. That kind of stuff, right? Um, yeah. Alright, so, talk about the gloves. Uh, we're using Calm Spirit. And Calm Spirit is one part of the build that I'm not really happy with, right? So why is that? Well, first of all, well, Calm Spirit is performing um, very well. Um, you can see our Rage Regen when we have Grace up is, actually it's better if we look in POB, 118 Rage every 4 seconds. So, and that's with that uh, at about 3.5 million armor. And, well, you can probably sell like, Rage is not a problem. Rage regen is pretty much infinite at this point. Once you get a lot of armor, the armor and evasion mastery over here is enough to um, basically it was unlimited rage and permanent berserk. Basically, well, basically permanent berserk, right? So that sounds great and all. And um, well, why aren't you happy with it? Well, main problem I have is well is ES recovery. So we don't have a lot of ES recovery. We do have um, ES on hit and a bit of leech. Um, but, you know, this is like all based on when you're attacking, right? If you're not doing anything, well, you're not regenerating energy shields, you're not doing this, you know, and um, I just don't really like that kind of, um, the way that kind of feels, right, in game. 
Uh, damage is pretty nice when you have the Berserk, and depending on well, you know what you're doing, really, like if you're just going in, one-shotting the bosses, getting out, then um, these, uh, you know, the Calm Spirit, you're not really gonna, even going to notice the downside because, you know, everything's just dead right away. But if you're doing, like, extremely juiced maps, or if you want to do, like, strong, um, ghosting and, you know, a lot of other things, you do want to have ES regen, otherwise it's not going to really feel that good, right? So, I think in the future, I will be dropping the Calm Spirit gloves in favor of a pair of um, rare gloves, like Sorcerer gloves, like I crafted last league. And if you're interested, I do have a video on how I crafted those. So we'll probably be going over to those gloves in the future um, and dropping Berserk uh, and Calm Spirit entirely. So one thing you can do to actually get a little bit of ES, a little bit more ES regen is um, go over to Ghost Reaver. Maybe this might help if you have some leech, right? Right, it doubles the amount of leech you get. So that's pretty nice. Um, aside from that, yeah, I do have a uh, leech charm over here. Um, and then I do have ES on hit on the Watcher's Eye. Okay, so, you know, it is, um, it, it's good enough. I'm doing Spilacrum, weigh 30, no problem. And, yeah, so I just don't really like not having passive ES regen. I don't know, maybe it's just a like personal preference, but I don't know. Um, tell me what you guys think, you know. The Calm Spirit with the uh, Permanent Rage or Permanent Berserk is insanely powerful. Um, very nice too, actually having like 300% increased movement speed. If I like slot in this like Quicksilver Flask, you can see we are just like, you know, breaking the speed limit and about to be pulled over by the cops and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's very nice having Calm Spirit, but the downside of no ES regen is something I just don't like personally. All right, so after that, let's go over some of the flasks. Uh, not really much uh, anything special here, just evasion armor. Um, so I'm going for additional elemental resistances. Um, you could actually get attack speed on here, and attack speed uh, did give me a little bit more damage. Faster attacks also does um, increase the amount of wither stacks you get, or like the speed you get them, right? But uh, first of all, I didn't really have a lot of elemental resistances. So if we take this off, you could see, well, you know, I'm at a little bit overcapped for lightning. Um, but then also it does impact how much armor we have. So 3.3 million, 3.1 million. So, you know, having a little bit more resistance gives you a bit more armor. And why is that important? That is because, uh, first of all, for more armor means more fizz max hit or like elemental max hit and it also does impact our rage regeneration right so that's something you consider with your flask aside from that uh jade flask with reduced mana cost to skills i did try a like a bismuth flask or those kind of things but the jade flask overall was giving more damage right okay aside from that taste of haste try to get 28 quality with um hillock hillock if you can and that's pretty much it so gem links, there is nothing really special to say about the gem links, um, except for I guess this setup here having the boots. So I'm not linking my defiance banner to the empower setup over here, just because, well, I just don't have mana for it, right? But aside from that, just grace, uh, empower, inspiration, and then we have defiance banner because this does get um, defiance banner does gain the levels you get from the march of the legion, but since it's not an aura, we can still cast it normally, right? So it's kind of cool tech you can use there. Okay, so gem links, uh, just look in the POB, nothing nothing special going on there. And let's see, passive tree, let's go over that uh, real quick. So pretty much standard, um, not, not really much to say here. If you don't have these one passive voices, then um, you see I do have an extra point here that you could fit, you could fit everything I'm doing now in with three, three passive voices. Um, you just won't have this one point here, which is not really a problem. Um, aside from that, if you did have to drop points, you would have to drop the Energy Shield Mastery. Um, maybe get some better small clusters so you can drop this reservation here, right? So that's three points you'll probably be able to get back once you have good clusters. So, I don't know, if you don't have voices, it is going to be pretty hard to pull off Transcendence um, this league. And I think you'd probably be better off trying one of the other builds. Okay, so that's... It basically, so uh, Militant Faith, let's go over this. Uh, we have 
Uh, the main thing you want for transcendence is going to be conquered by um, High Templar Marxists, and then we have 1% reduced mana cost of skills and increased effect of non curse aura. So we have 170 devotion right now with the Timeless Jewel, and our uh, Unnatural Instinct, which actually gives us devotion. You see, we get all the devotion from here. And the good thing about this is, it's first of all, we're getting 17% increased aura effect, very nice. And then we have 17% reduced mana cost of skills, which basically means it's easy to get grace. All we need to get grace going is the inspiration, the flask, and then this timeless stroll, and we don't have to get it on any of our gear. See why on my ring, I don't even have reduced mana cost of skills on my ring because we have so much reduced mana cost of skills coming in uh, from this timeless stroll. Okay, so. Uh, after that, uh, Balance of Terror, you want to get the main mod you want here is Inflict Withered on uh, for 2 seconds on hit if you've cast Despair in the past 10 seconds. And if you can get the second mod for Despair, which is immune to curses, well, then that's just, um, you know, perfect, right? Other jewels we're using is the Watcher's Eye, so you do want to have, um, you do want to get your um, Fizz Taken conversion here. You'll have to go in pob and pull out a calculator and see add up all your gear pieces together to see how much you actually need on the watcher's eye this is going to be extremely expensive as a, a watcher's eye like this can go for you know one to two mirrors probably uh so you might have to either drop the es on hit in favor of like leech or just get a single mod and um, i think you might be able to pull it off with just single mod and es on hit and then um you basically are going to be reliant on your like flask. You might, you know, you might be able to pull off. I'm not sure, but you'll have to calculate this, you know, with all of your gear, add it all up together and see how much you need. All right. And if you can't really get enough to convert to hundred percent fizz, then do not try transcendence. Okay. So you, you need to be able to have a hundred percent converted at the end of the day when your flask is up or it's just i don't play it uh, go play the next build we'll talk about which is going to be a non-transcendence version which is actually um, very tanky as well and i'm not really sure if you can tank a lot of uber one shots and all this kind of stuff but it can definitely uh do quite a bit of damage and does have quite a big uh quite a lot of ehp and max hit taken okay aside from the other jewel we are using melding of the flesh right to get our all res and that is pretty much it for the passives. Okay, let's go over the um, Pantheons, and then we'll do the Charms after that in Ascendancy. So, for Pantheons, we're using Soul of Arakali, because this build does um, suffer. I mean, it's, it's not suffer, but its weak point is damage over time, so we're using the damage over time Pantheon. And then I'm also using Soul of Aberath um, for less uh, Ignite. Well, I guess Ignite doesn't matter because we have Purity of Elements, but uh, the Burning Ground, right? So we're immune to Burning Ground. Now, usually I am using the Soul of Rislatha because of, I don't know, the Soul of Relakesh. Sorry, guys. So this one basically makes um, you, like, bleeding just, just doesn't do anything to you when you have this, right? But since we are pretty much always having our flask up, and when we when you have 100% of fizz taken as something else, right? So if you're not taking any physical damage, bleeding just cannot be inflicted on you. You cannot, like, it just doesn't happen. And if it ever does happen, I am using a charm, so it's a good time to go over the charms, right? One of my charms has remove bleeding when you use a flask. So if we ever get bleeded, uh, inflicted on us we just use our flask and that removes the bleed and then it also makes us immune to bleed because we're not taking any fizz damage right so so far this has worked out pretty good for me uh, after that like i said we have some leech here and cannot be stunned while fortified since we're scion we have 50 percent chance to fortify on hit with attack skills so our leap slam when we're leap slamming around the map, we're gonna get fortified, we're gonna become immune to stun, so we no longer have to use unwavering stance, so we get one extra point. So that is kind of a nice, um, what do you call it? Is this a suffix? I think it is, right? Yeah, so very nice suffix to get um, uh, on your charms over here. And then we just have one magic uh, utility flask um, applied to you at 50% increased effect. So ideally, you would want to have more of these, right? So if you could get Frenzies from somewhere else, like something like Poacher's Mark, I just do not have the gem slots right now, but if you get Poacher's Mark, 
then you can have another magic uh, flask here. It's going to give you quite a lot more damage. And if you can get a leech from somewhere else too, or if we um, switch over to the rare gloves and use Zealot's Oath for ES regen, well, we don't need the leech anymore, so we can get another one here. And then I think end of the day, having three of these magic utility flasks is going to be the goal. Um, it's going to give us you know, quite a lot of armor and more damage, right? All right, so that's the charms. Let's go over the ascendancy. Ascendancy, I mean, pretty much always going to be using the same ascendancy. We go to champion, we go path of duelist, we go necromancer. So a lot of people ask why necromancer and uh, let's go take a look in POB. But the main reason we're using this is because auras from your skills grant 2% increased attack and cast speed. Now this is an aura, it's skilled with aura effect. Now let's see, so that's 2%, right? Base, let's go look in POB. Let's go over to um, Smite. Now, let's look at the attack speed. Why is one of them eight? But that 2% is now 6%. So, I don't know why one of them is showing up as 8%. Okay, that is very weird. But yeah, because we have 300% aura effect, we're a little bit over 300%. So, that 2% per aura is now 6% per aura. And you can see we do have quite a lot of auras and that's in pretty much a uh, pretty um, insane amount of increased attack speed so that is why we go necromancer and it also gives cast speed right so casting despair very fast casting grace very fast um yeah all right so that is the ascendancy and that'll be it for the transcendence uh build now let's go over one of the other ones real quick all right, so let's go over the next build. It's going to be a um, Aegis Aurora variant. Now, this one isn't uh, running Transcendence, but uh, you can see our EHP is pretty insane. Effective uh, hit pull is infinite. Well, that's just because of the Aegis Aurora recovery, and our max hit taken is still pretty respectable. Now, this can go quite a bit higher, and the way we're getting this is with uh, 90 all res, and then we have these 3% of armor applies to fire, cold, and lightning damage taken from hits, okay? So we only have two of them right now. Uh, that's just because we are using frenzies. But if you wanted to um, go, let's say, max tank route on this, you would use three of these charms, right? So now we went from 200, let's just see. We went from 250, I'm looking at the fire max hit um let's look at the cold max hit actually so about 300k cold max hit now we're at 340 now you can also get this on a jewel so there is a jewel that which was taken that can also roll this mod now if we look at this our max hit taken is looking pretty insane right so i mean uh, we would have to probably drop this attack mastery here to get this um, and which means we actually also lost our frenzies and uh, on our Vol Smite, we are losing this for Ancestral Call. Awaken Ancestral Call. So this is kind of what it would look like if you went max tank on this build. Uh, damage is a little bit lower, right? But still like you're going to have insane recovery and this kind of stuff. So that's one thing you can kind of do if you want to go for the max like tankiness route. But so this build is pretty much exactly the same as my last build. You can see we are still running the same passive tree, except we're using the same timeless jewel as well, except we're just not specking into transcendence. Uh, and we are also, one thing we're doing differently is we're taking this attack mastery because since we're using Aegis Aurora, we get plus five cold res. So we don't have to take this area here. So you can do a lot with this. You don't really have to take this, but taking this attack mastery basically means that, well, we can drop Ancestral Call and take Awaken Elemental Damage with attacks to get uh, another um, damage support gem in our links. So if you don't want to do that, you could put Ancestral Call back in, right? And then you'd have another four points to play around with. Like you could go get Ghost Reaver, right? To get some more Leech. Or uh, you could maybe even come down for Divine Shield, like this, right? Or you could grab it with a Thread of Hope. You could get another Jewel Socket, like we mentioned here. You could get this Jewel Socket uh, if you wanted, or you can get a Thread of Hope, and then jump here and grab Glancing Blows and Divine Shield. You might have to drop another point somewhere, maybe this one here, right? Get a Thread of Hope, get Divine Shield, get Glancing Blows, get a lot more recovery. 
So uh, up to you how to build it. That's just kind of the base tree that I had um, like this. Um, feel free to customize it as you like. So for the charms, what we're using on this one is we are using two of the 3% of armor applies to um, elemental damage, right? And the last one, just frenzy and remove bleeding when you use a flask. Um, if you can get your frenzies in some other way, I don't know why the mana got messed up. Let's just re-import it. It just uh, kind of um, messes, POB kind of messes it up when I change talent points around for some reason. But anyways, yeah. So if you can get frenzies in another way, like we mentioned before, you can get them with um, mark on hit, poacher's mark, right? That's going to give you frenzies. You could get another one of these. Or if you just don't care about frenzies, then get rid of them. But aside from that, the build is exactly the same as the Transcendence version, um, except for some of the items. The items is we're just changing our Aegis Aurora. I mean, our Dawnbreaker for the Aegis Aurora, right? Uh, but yeah, Aegis Aurora, and then the rest of the gear is the same. So nice thing about this is we do get the benefit of running um, a mini transcendence with the without the downside. So we have 90 all res, so that means degens are not going to hurt you as much. Um, and you don't have to really worry about your flask uptime, right? See, even without the flask, we've insane fizz max hit taken. Um, so that's something to consider as well. And then one thing you can do is, since we don't actually need to convert 100% of our fizz damage to elemental, what we can do is well, we can get a synth helmet, right? So you can get a very nice uh, synth helmet, 15 aura effect, and get some like gem levels and all that kind of cool stuff on there, you know? And if you want, if you're wondering what it looks like without the helmet, or you see our fizz max hit is still very high when we have, uh, even if we're not even using a helmet, right? So we don't, that's minus 18% fizz conversion to elemental, and our EHP numbers are still looking very good. Right, so um, helmet slot is um, you have the option to go for for a um, synthesized helmet, which is very big for damage. And that's gonna like boost your damage by quite a bit. Aside from that, everything else is the same, guys. Okay, so that's one. I, this this version of the build is one that I'm actually the most interested in right now. I'm just testing out transcendence, just you know, seeing how transcendence feels in the current patch. Um, if we can still go and tank the bosses, you know, do the Ubers, the, <laughs> the Ubers, right? So let's see if we can tank the Ubers um, and that kind of stuff. And then I'll probably be swapping over to this um, Aegis Aurora variant and trying to min-max this one. All right, so next build we have is actually pretty much the same as the one we just looked at, except um, we're doing one little thing different, and that is we are using two Replica Dream Feathers, right? So two Replica Dream Feathers... And, well, you can see this basically doubles our damage. So, to get 90 all res, we do have to come down here to pick up the prismatic skin area. And that means we had to cut out points somewhere. So I did cut out this armor and evasion shield mastery, which I think, in hindsight, might not be that good. Might not be that good because um, this is pretty insane. So if we take this, we'll you know, get like 100k max EHP. Um, so, I don't know, something to consider, guys. You you will have some points here. Like I said, we, we are taking the attack mastery, so we do have, we don't have to use Ancestral Call. There are some points you can cut out, like this one, uh, this one, and um, once you get good cluster jewels, eventually you can cut these reservation points out. And uh, with those points, well, if you don't have voices, you probably are going to have to cut those out anyways, or the, the one, one passive voice, right? Um, and then, but ideally on this one too, I think you do want to come to this jewel to grab Divine Shield because Divine Shield is going to be pretty much amazing for your ES recovery. So um, as, as anytime you get hit, there's even a lot of spells or uh, there's a lot of um, most attacks in the game is fizz damage and you're going to be negating uh, quite a lot of that. So that's just going to be regenerated, right? As ES, so it's going to fix your ES regen pretty much for the most part. But yeah, that's the build, guys. Um, so uh, this one, what are we using on the charms? The charms are exactly the same as the Aegis Aurora variant for now. And uh, let's talk about the Pantheons. So Pantheons, still the same. Arakali, um, Abareth. You might want to change this to um, Relakesh to um, negate the bleeding, but then you'll have to deal with the Burning Ground. 
So something to consider which Pantheon you want to use. So this the builds right now, they're not really 100% optimized. They're just like, this is what you need to get going. And we'll, we will be optimizing them in the future once we get better gear and all that kind of stuff. But for now, this is what it is. And um, I think we will end the video over here. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have questions. You can put them in the comments of the video or in my Discord, and we'll try to get around to you uh, there. And yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.